Welcome to Cloud Times CEO series. Uh, my name is Martin Tanto, and I'm with Michael Grant, CEO of Cloud Scaling today. Hi, Welcome. Michael. How are you? Good to have you here. Good Thank to be you. here. Thank you. And today is sunny San Francisco. Yes, we like being in San Francisco. Yeah, great place, by the way, as well here. I'll apologize now for any sirens that come by. We're <laughs> yeah. right at the corner of Pine and Kearney, and we get lots of uh, noise periodically, but hopefully not too much in the next few minutes. Very nice, yeah, I like your game room. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about cloud scaling. Um, who founded it, is, if, if you founded it, or somebody else, and, and why, and a little bit about the, the history of your company. Sure, so cloud scaling has gone through a couple incarnations. It was originally founded by Randy Bias and Adam Waters, mm -hmm. mostly focused on building what I would characterize as custom cloud infrastructure. So when Randy and Adam founded the company, they were seeing this shift happening, the you know, disruptive shift in the way IT infrastructure is deployed, essentially what we now call cloud infrastructure. And you know, they felt that the best thing to do uh, as a company was to go out and actually engage and do projects with customers as a learning exercise um, around what the market needs were and what, what customers were trying to do with cloud infrastructure and what some of the driving application and use cases mm -hmm. were. And so, you know, the company initially started as a services company with a stellar group of engineering folks who all came from, you know, web scale infrastructure backgrounds and had built um, and deployed large cloud infrastructure in previous lives, you know, companies like Twitter and Google. Um, and, and the company essentially uh, went out and did a number of these large projects, iterating its way towards ultimately deciding, um, you know, as part of the plan to transition to a product company. And some of our folks were... And when was that then? That was done, so uh, that was the, the, the transition started kind of early last year, early 2011. Okay. And the timing for that, the real initiator for that was the OpenStack project. Right. right. And uh, a couple of our guys were, you know, early on uh, familiar and uh, peripherally involved in, in the inception for OpenStack. And so, you know, Randy and the team felt that it wasn't really uh, a good investment for cloud scaling to try to recreate a core technology um, like OpenStack, you know, in a company and that we were really focused on an open architecture. And so as OpenStack spun out uh, of Rackspace and NASA, that was the impetus and, and we could then focus on as a company building all the capabilities around OpenStack that were, um, you know, value-added contributions. And so that's essentially what we've been doing for the last year. And kind year. of the OpenStack versus CloudStack uh, <laughs> question is kind right. of over, right? Well, yeah, I mean, we're clearly in the OpenStack camp. Right. And, um, you know, we actually, some folks may not know, we did one of the largest CloudStack deployments um, in, in, at, at the time um, at Korea Telecom. So the team right. here had a lot of familiarity with uh, CloudStack and how it was architected and, you know, how it was built and some of the uh, shortcomings. And, you know, as OpenStack, uh, came out, it was, in our engineering team's assessment, a much better architected solution uh, as a core technology to work with. And so we decided that it really had the right stuff and, and we put all our energy into, you know, going down the OpenStack path. What, if, if you're saying open cloud approach, that's kind of, you know, your approach that um, cloud scan is based on, yeah. what's the philosophy behind that? So here's what we've heard. I'll, I'll put it in customer language, right? Because I'm a business guy, um, and I, I tend to focus on customers and what customers are asking for. And, and sometimes customers are asking for things um, more broadly without getting down into the bits and bytes. And, and so open cloud, the philosophy behind that is really an encapsulation of what customers have told us they want in this next phase of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I think uh, you know your viewers, you know, who are old enough, <laughs> may be aware that we've gone through some series of infrastructure transitions, infrastructure model transitions. Mm -hmm. Right, we went from mainframes to client server, client server to web app tier applications, and now we're you know in the cloud 
era. And each time there was that shift, there was an architectural shift mm -hmm. in how infrastructure was deployed and how software and hardware were deployed to support those new applications. And so what we've heard from customers is that you know they've invested a lot in what we would characterize as that last phase, right? And they're doing enterprise virtualization products with VMware and the classic enterprise IT customers. But as they look to invest in new cloud infrastructure for supporting a lot of the newer workloads and newer applications, we call them cloud-centric applications, um, they want a much more open architecture. They don't want to be locked in to specific vendors' hardware yeah. uh, and software moving forward. They want the ability to have choice and they want to have the ability to adjust and, and, and scale on the basis of an open architecture. So that's been the clear message from customers to us is, you know, don't lock us in. Um, and, you know, we want to take advantage of community innovation as is the case with OpenStack. Um, we're very happy to pay for value add um, in terms of solutions. So, you know, we don't want to build it all ourselves, but we want an open architecture. And I think that, you know, shouldn't be any surprise that in some ways customers self-select. They look around and they say, okay, I don't want to use the old way, right? When I'm building a new Elastic application um, that has scale-out needs, I'm probably not going to put it on something like a VMware vSphere cloud, right? It's costly, it's not that agile, you know, there's a lot of heavy lifting there. Um, so when they look at that and they look at what their options are, OpenStack as a core technology becomes interesting to them. And so, you know, it's of course open source, right? So I think, you know, the kinds of customers we're talking to are looking at, okay, well, I like that, right? Because I'm starting with an open source core, and then I want to build out from there around, you know, that, and their philosophy is informed by that. I want an open architecture, right? I don't want to bring in an open source effort and then go marry it with some proprietary, you know, solution, both either on the hardware or the software. Yeah, and that's exactly where your solution, Open Cloud OS, comes in. Correct, right? yes. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. And maybe you can give us some customer examples where you, of customers that are using this uh, solution. So we're, uh, first of all, we're shipping end of this quarter, right? So end of June, and we've worked with uh, some early customers. I, I can't use their names at this point, um, but I can talk about some of the use cases. That would be great. Um, so Open Cloud OS was really born from a couple of things. One, it's entirely based on OpenStack technology. Yeah. So one of the things I think that's sometimes confusing is people look at OpenStack and they think, oh, there's it's cloud software. I, that's it. I just download OpenStack and I've got a cloud, right? And the reality is, is that um, we look at OpenStack a lot like the Linux kernel. So you know, the Linux kernel is a very important component of an overall stack, right? In in the data center, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's not a solution. And so OpenStack, you know is a technology that we are contributing to and we're making better. So we're a community member, we're a gold member of the foundation, and so our engineering team is making contributions back to make OpenStack better. However, when you think about production grade deployments of cloud infrastructure that start from what may be a small deployment to a very large scale out deployment of you know, tens or even hundreds of racks over time, depending on the customer and the use case, then you're talking about a set of needs around running, deploying, managing a cloud infrastructure that requires a lot more capability than just OpenStack as a core technology. Yeah. And so, you know, in answer to your question, Open Cloud OS is a is it taking OpenStack and essentially adding a bunch of capabilities around that to make it more robust, make it more production grade, to make it more scalable, and provide an architecture for taking OpenStack and, you know, uh, OpenCloud OS is sort of OpenStack on steroids, right? It's, 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 not, it's not a fork, it's not anything that's different. 
it's you know taking OpenStack and its innovation track with the community and adding things around it that IT professionals, cloud service providers, the people who are going to actually have responsibility for deploying and running and managing these clouds when they're really running production loads care about. You know, and those are the features that we're focused on adding. Okay. And then, you know, as it relates to some of our early, you know, uh, early beta customers that we've been working with, I mean, it ranges. Um, there's, you know, it ranges from very small, you know, to us small would be a couple of racks, you know, to, you know, uh, a, a un an unnamed customer who's been, you know, using it with, uh, you know, upwards of 50 racks. And so, you know, for us, our ability to cover that range of deployment type and use case is one of the key engineering and product value props that Open Cloud OS, you know, provides. And, you know, the applications that our customers are interested in deploying and the use cases, some of the use cases uh, in reference to some of the customers we've been working with, tend to focus on these newer applications that are elastic scale out, right? So financial services firms that are building iPad applications that you know their customers and clients use, and there's huge elasticity depending on how those applications are, are being leveraged. There are you know mobile health initiatives, yeah. right? You know there are uh, you know uh, entertainment industry applications where you're having you know render clouds where you know the different teams working on different parts of a movie are looking to leverage a cloud infrastructure. Um, you have a whole host of new applications that are being deployed actually on Amazon. Um, some of those are looking at how do we get scale for those in our own infrastructure for a variety of cost and management and performance tuning reasons. So, you know, it's really, it, it's across the board, but the universal, um, the universal commonality is really these newer scale-out applications, which really weren't possible, um, you know, even five to eight years ago. And, and we're seeing now, because Amazon has pioneered a lot of this, we're seeing now an explosion of these types of new business initiatives, new services, yeah. new applications. And then the question becomes, well, what do I run that on? And you'll be announcing some of the customers in the full launch of uh, the OS when? That, well, I'm not going to tell you when that's okay. going to be exactly, but it, yes, we will, be, we will be doing that in the not, in the not too distant future. Okay, uh, that's good. Good. Um, are you hiring? We are hiring. Uh, so, you know, we're hiring great infrastructure software yeah. engineers, right? So we're always looking for great talent. It's great to be in San Francisco. <laughs> so if you're tired of the valley and you know you want to come to the city and you know be right downtown, we're you know a couple blocks from BART and Caltrain and uh, Muni and you know it's a great working environment. So many tech engineering also biz dev Yeah, we're marketing. beginning we're beginning to build the marketing and sales team. So we're interested in talking to you know folks there as well. So we're right at the phase of, you know, obviously as you would expect of a company that's, you know, on getting close to releasing its product and uh, and now we're building the team. We have a great team, great set of guys and we're looking to expand. Sounds very exciting. Great. Thank you so much, Mark. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.